Hi everyone, I'm Pam DeMoy, the Decorating Diva, and welcome to our webinar. So we have Patty Otto tonight, who is a very dear friend and a wonderful colleague, and I just love being her friend. She always has great ideas. So Patty is, we're calling this Reindeer Games and Other Holiday Fun Stuff. And so first, let me thank our sponsors. Let's thank Baby Lock Sewing Machines for the beautiful sewing machines we get to use, and Laura Star Irons for our irons, and let's thank um, Daylight Lighting for our lighting and for Maurice Cutlery for our specialty scissors, and also to French European for the, you can't see it, but my double over here in the corner that looks the same size as me, so she's a little bit chubby, my dress form. <laughs> Aren't so, we all? <laughs> so you know, here's one thing, let me just do a little plug for Joe. One of the cool things about these dress forms, okay, I'm gonna tell you, they're not cheap, but here's the deal. Okay, so yeah, she's got a belly like me, but in the back, there's a zipper. So when I get lose weight, I can unzip this. I can take padding out, or if I gain more weight, I can add padding in. So she stays my size all the time. And that's very cool. All right, Patty, take it away. Good evening. How is everyone doing? We're gonna play some fun reindeer games. And of course, I, I have some freebies for you and some specials. So we're gonna get started. Um, I love this time of year, as you can tell by my sweater. And behind me, I have this wonderful garland. This is in my front hall. My front hall is Candyland. And then my husband has about 75 snowmen. So our living room is, um, is um, Snowland, and then I have about 80 nativity sets. <laughs> and I don't even put them all out every year. I mean, that's just one of my, that's one of my things. So um, we do really get into Christmas here. And of course we have the two grandsons that are um, six and going to be eight. So lots and lots of fun. We're gonna do Christmas cookies in a couple of weeks, not in my kitchen. So always fun. So let's start with some reindeer games. This is a really fun design and this is one of the freebies. And what you can do is you can decorate a bag or I did a basket liner and this was on the outside of the basket. And the games that I have are really simple although you can add other games to it. And even the grandsons at, like I said, six and eight, just they, they look for the basket and this is what they want to play. First thing we're going to do is the candy game. And it's very simple. It is simply some pieces that you're going to embroider. And they look like this. And then you're going to cut a circle and fuse it on the back. And they are, of course, different colors. The goal is to put them all down like this and then try to remember where the two were that you, um, you know, oh, where was that other one? Oh, maybe it was here. No, it was here. And they usually beat me. I don't know what it is about kids' memories, but they just really enjoy this. So these are just embroidered on felt with a tearaway. And then you're going to cut a circle um, of fabric and fusible web. I've been using these cutters from Fiskars to cut the circles. And it works really quick and easy. Depending on which one you use, you can cut through both um, fabric and fusible web at the same time, or just cut through the fusible web and then trim out your fabrics but as many different colors as you can find, that's how many you can make. And of course you wanna do an even number. So I had a couple little girls over here a couple of weeks ago while their mom was getting a fitting for a dress and they were, they were just all over this. And when mom came to pick up the dress, they were sad that they didn't get to stay and play at Miss Patty's house. So you also have this, the candy game logo. Now, if you are lazy, one of the things you can do is just use different colors of bobbin thread. And those work really well also. So a great way to use up scrap thread, make sure you have enough to complete the design. 
And that's just another way. Now, for those of you that don't have an embroidery machine, you can make your own simply with felt. And what I did is you're using white felt. You want two layers because they can, the kids can see through that and just cut these shapes with fusible web on the back, fuse it in place. And here's your colored circles. And you want to do two of each. There's my blue, my green, my yellow. And it, it's just a really fun game. Now, if you want to get fancy, you can do fussy cuts. This is from some Minecraft fabric that my grandson is totally into. Everything is Minecraft. Um, but just a real simple game. And you will be surprised how often they want to play that. So that is just the start of the reindeer game. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna play tic-tac-doe. And this is super fun. You have our cute little reindeer. And then you also have this design and I put it on two pieces of felt, fold it over the edge and put some Velcro. Now here are the playing pieces. And we have hoofs, and we have antlers. So I always go for the corners and that way I win. Although with the grandsons, I, I try not to, um, I let them win on occasion because they like that. Now, if you, like I said, if you don't have an embroidering machine, you can probably do this with other things. You could do different colored candies. You could fussy cut all sorts of fun things and fuse them onto fleece. But you have tic-tac-toe in three sizes in our freebies. Now, let me show you how to do these really clever gift bags. And you also have the directions for these in the freebies. They are super, super easy. We are going to start with a piece of fabric. And I've given you dimensions, although you can make these any size you wish. And serge or zigzag, the short ends. And then this is a four inch piece of fusible web. Pull the paper off, do a little quarter inch slit right there. Fuse this in place on both sides, here and here. And when you're done, that looks like this. So this is fused and this is fused. You're gonna fold over a generous two inches. And now we're going to top stitch two rows, one here and one here. And that will look like this. We have my two rows of top stitching. I've done it in white so that you can see and simply serge or stitch and zigzag both sides. You've got this little notch cut out here and that's where you're gonna stop, um, stop or start, um, back stitch or tie off. And then when you turn it to the right side, you're simply going to run cording or ribbon in between those two rows of stitching. And that gives you just this really quick and easy bag. And I've done some personalized with the kids' names on them. You also have the Candy Game logo that you can add. I like to add a bead onto my ties because it makes it easier. But that is those clever little bags. And that is all in the freebies. And you will find those on my website. Normally, Pam has them listed. But she was uh, just with her crazy week here. She wasn't able to load them. So there, there are the specials. So just search for specials on my website, greatcopy.com. Um, and if you have any problems, just, just shoot me an email. They were kind of added at the last minute. So you can add other games to the reindeer games. There's a new game out called Dos. My grandsons love to play Uno. And um, even the six-year-old, he's getting to be quite, quite the devil. 
And so there's a new game out called Dose. So we're anxious to try this. I do have to do a little bragging. This is my our grandson, Ben, and he's going to be eight. And this is a stuffed animal he designed. It's from Minecraft. Um, I don't get the video games. But this is one that he did this summer. It was really cute. He knew that he needed a pattern. And I like to show this to my beginning students, because if a seven-year-old can help make these, they can, you know, they can sew also. So he knew he needed seam allowance and he knew he needed to leave a hole. And then he started writing directions. Sew parts, S-O-W, sew parts together. Sew halves together, but leave a hole in the top. Stuff it, seal the hole in the top. So, um, so he made these little stuff, stuffies, he calls them. Um, but he, he's getting pretty good at working at the um, sewing machine. Now for my sweater, what I did was I embroidered on knit suede. And I like knit suede. Applique. Knit suede is um, a very um, densely knit fabric. It does not fray. Um, it holds up really well for washing. Felt was fine for the games, but for like the sweater I have on, it's just much nicer to have a fabric that's going to hold up. So I did it on the knit suede and then I cut them out and I just top stitch them in place. And so you're gonna see just the, the top stitching. I haven't damaged the sweater at all with very dense em embroidery but that is one way to use these designs. Now, these are from the Gingerbread House Collection and they come in multiple sizes. I like to give this set as a, as a okay. gift. Mm -hmm. um, we have an applique gingerbread house that comes in three different sizes. And then we have um, gingerbread boy and girl in three sizes and all of these treats. Now I will tell you that these treats have no calories. So you can make and enjoy as many of these as you like. And they make everything from great garland to game pieces, as I've said before, just really fun to do. Now, when I give towels, I like to give a set of three because when I'm, they're hanging on the, um, in the bar on my oven, the three sets together look, look really great. So we have our gingerbread house and our gingerbread people and lots of really great candy. The um, Rick Rack trim really sets the towels off. And those towels are from all about lengths. They come in multiple sizes. So you can make small, um, like this is a small tree all the way up to large. Here's the large. Um, gingerbread house and the gingerbread people come in uh, lots of things. They also make great ornaments and they can be personalized. I give my grandsons a personalized ornament every year it has their name and the year on it um, so that when they get older, they'll have, you know, great memories. Sheila would like to know where you buy your knit suede. Um, I've gotten some of it at, at Joann's. I've got some of it at fabric.com. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Because then it, you know, because it comes in colors. The gingerbread people are in brown. Um, all the, the candy and stuff are all generally in white. I have a nice sheen to it. And it has a nice, it does have a nice sheen to it. And you can be trimmed and it's, it's not going to fray. I leave an eighth to a quarter of an inch all the way around. Okay, next thing we're gonna do are, these are really clever and I really like this set. These are gift card holders. There's several different, um, and these are also really great personalized, um, you know, with the, with the date and the year or just the name. I've done a couple with people who have grandchildren with names that you don't find anywhere else like Xander and, um, whatever, but they fit just a gift card or cash. You could fold up and put your letter to Santa in this one. So, mm -hmm. but they fit right in here. Now that needs to be trimmed a little more. Okay. 
Now these are done on felt and there's only one of them that fits the four by four hoop. Everything else hit, fits the five by seven or the um, six by 10 because they have to be very specific um, to fit the gift card. Gift cards come in pretty standard sizes. Now what you're gonna find is a direction sheet for each of the designs. And this is really important to follow step-by-step step, um, for the directions. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to insert the gift card holder. What I do with my directions, I list your notions. I list the design file and the sizes, the stitch count, um, and the sizes in inches and metric. And then um, I list step-by-step um, -step your directions on hooping stabilizer, putting felt on, um, when to cut the opening. That's real important because if you forget to cut the opening and you finish it, you're going to have to go in there with a really sharp scissors and you may end up saying some bad words. Even if you just cut a little bit of an opening so that you can cut the rest of it later, but make, that's a very important step. Now we have two different styles. This style here is one where the card inserts in the top, as is the bells. Now the bells also make a great wedding gift. Do you do it in um, silver and gold or their wedding colors? And like I said, it can be personalized. That's always fun. You can personalize on the back also. And most of these will fit in an envelope and eas easily mailed. So um, people that you don't see very often, the train is also another one where it slips in and the train is an applique. So follow those directions step by step. For most of the designs, you are going to begin by stitching. It's either straight or curved. And that is the opening for the gift card. And I generally choose a thread color that matches my, my um, felt, I've done it in contrast for you right here. So the ones that have a slit, this is how you're gonna do that. Then you will stop and you're gonna cut your slit. Now a surgical seam ripper is a great way to start cutting that slit with it removed from the embroidery machine. Make sure, um, that you remove it, don't try to cut it on the machine. And you'll have to pretend that these hoops are embroidery hoops, because I only have so many hoops for teaching. Another clever tool is the small rotary cutter. That works really well for getting in there. And even if you just get it started, you don't need to finish the whole thing now, you can take a small scissors and finish it, but at least give yourself a little slit that you can start. Now you're gonna go to the next step, and that looks like this and it will give you the color orders and, and this is our little gingerbread man and we he's got some really nice nice white white icing eyes and mouth um, the buttons um, can be um, personalized for colors or you can actually sew buttons on there or glue buttons on there that's a nice accent then you're going to take a piece of felt and tape it to the underside and finish stitching the design. And then that will stitch all of this around here. Now, I generally go back and add my tab, my ribbon later with just um, some stitches. If you want to glue or tape the um, ribbon in here, you can, but when you're cutting these out, you have to be very careful because it's very easy to snip off that um, that ribbon that you placed so perfectly. This is my letters to Santa. And once again, there's my slit and my lettering. Now you will notice that I have just the top of this and this part done. The rest of it will stitch afterwards. And the reason for that is you stitch it first, your card's only going to go in so far. These are very specifically engineered designs. So this card will only go in up to here. That will stitch second. 
Otherwise, the card goes in all the way and it gets lost. So when you're looking at the thread orders, make sure you follow that because that is very, very specific. So that is special number one. And what you're going to get is the Christmas gift card holders download. And you're going to get the gingerbread treat download. And they both are just packed full of embroidery designs. And that's special number one. Normally, the two downloads would be 40. And the special for about 10 days is going to be $30. And you can find that on our website, greatcopy.com. I'll post that again later. Questions? Do you think a knit suede would work for coasters? Um, sure, you probably want to use a couple different, um, a couple layers or put it on cork or, um, you know, something that has some body. Knit suede doesn't have a lot of body. Um, it can be rather light, but it fuses well. And how about cork? Somebody asked if you could put some of these designs on cork. You know, I haven't really played with cork. Um, go ahead and try it. Um, but I know you can applique things on cork. So that's a knit suede, just it's fairly lightweight, but it's very sturdy. It just does not stretch in any direction. And you, like I said, you can cut it and it's not gonna fray. So that's why I, I use it a lot. And um, I use a lot for the boys' costumes and applique and all sorts of things. So at Joanne's, you will probably find it in the costume section. So they may only have limited colors. I found more colors at fabric.com. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is help you keep warm. Um, we went and helped my son and daughter-in-law pick out their Christmas tree last Friday in single digit wind chills. And um, I am so glad I had the, have these. One of the things I'm doing for Michelle's 24 hour webinar is, um, is high tech fabrics. Um, Alistair Wainwright said, there's no such thing as bad weather. There's just um, poor clothing. So uh, being from Wisconsin, um, we know about cold. It, the winter before we moved, there were 30 days below zero. And here they just freak out about that because I think we got down to five degrees once in the six years we've been here. Um, and of course, snow, you know, they just, they don't know how to handle snow either. So um, actually I love it. I drove in snow two years ago and it's like, oh, I kind of miss this. So, but the snow doesn't last long here like it does up North. So I've got some patterns that are gonna help you keep warm. And I'm going to show you some techniques next because um, people are always can be always challenged by um, how to do mittens and how to do some of my neck wrap. First, we're going to start with um, the Icelandic hats and, hat and mittens. And this is a really great hat. Comes in four sizes, children's through adult. And it has a matching pair of mittens. And I have used a red windblock fabric. And that is really great. I hope to have some kits up on my website a little bit later. I just didn't get around to them today. So this is the three-piece mitten, but we're going to start with the hat because hats are super easy. This is the Icelandic hat. And when you have a download, what's important is that you get the scale right. So this is the first page. I don't think you need to print all the pages, especially with the hats and mittens. Print just the sizes that you need. Main thing is important is you want to look at this box right here and make sure that they are one inch squares. I also gave you centimeters um, for those of you that use metric, but this is one inch. So take that, take your ruler, measure it, make sure that it is um, one inch. If not, you will have to go into your printing and either enlarge it or reduce it and only do 1% at a time. It really makes a difference. Um, here's your yardage, comes in adult large, adult teen and child. What's great about this hat pattern, this mitten pattern is you can use self fabric for the cuffs instead of ribbing. Your mittens, 
will fit on a piece of paper. So sometimes there's two on a page, sometimes there's only one piece on the page. When it comes to the hats, the hats will print and there is a continuation line. It says right here, stop, add extension before cutting. And I like to print on cardstock because it's very sturdy. And I find once I get a pattern I like, I'm going to use it time and time and time again. Now, I'm gonna show you a, a hemming technique, but first of all, I am going to chalk in a hemline and that is twice the depth of my um, hem. My hem is two inches. I've chalked up four inches from the cut edge. Now over here, we have two darts and that's basically what they are. And in, I have chalked in my stitching line. Can you see that? because we're not gonna end right here. We wanna end down here. So I am going to pin my two darts together. And when we're stitching, we're gonna start here. And when you come down, don't stop at the end, end of the cutting. You wanna continue all the way down here. And that gives you this little dart right here. And because you want that to be a nice, smooth transition. Now, I serger or sewing machine, I get this question asked a lot. These hats can be done on a serger. My garments are great for a serger. If you don't have one, a sewing machine is just fine. The hats and uh, for the mittens, I do use the sewing machine because it is really, really hard to get around this curve with a serger. And when we do mittens next, I'll show you why. So what I've done is I've done both my darts at the same time. Now I'm gonna clip the thread in between, but I do wanna knot this at the bottom. And I want my knot to be really close. So I'm just gonna tie a knot. And if you hold that knot really close, that knot is gonna be really close to there and then you can clip this thread. Do you wanna see that again? So I'm gonna tie a knot. And if you hold that knot, I'm just gonna hold it. There's my knot really close to the end. And now I can trim this thread. Yes, you could pull it through, but especially if I'm doing, you know, like two dozen hats for the rescue center, I want to want to work quick and easily. And the knot there is just fine. So I have my two darts done. Now I am going to finish the top. And it's basically a really long dart that starts here, goes all the way up and over. I like to put one seam one way and one the other way. And then I'm gonna come down and remember, we're gonna finish that dart way down here, not here where it's cut. We're gonna finish that dart way down here and I'm gonna knot that also. I find I don't usually knot this end because it's gonna be in the hem. Now I have that finished and that looks like this. Now I'm gonna go over to my spray booth and I'm gonna cover everything with newspaper except my hem. And I'm gonna give that a spritz with the spray adhesive. And I'm gonna give this side a spritz with my spray adhesive. And here's my chalk line. I know it's hard to see now because um, the chalk has kind of disappeared. And I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna finger press that to that chalk line and that um, spray adhesive is going to hold that in place. And now I have that perfectly even two inch hem in place, ready to be stitched. I don't have to worry about pinning it. Um, I can stitch from the wrong side. I can stitch from the right side. I like to stitch from the wrong side and do my cover stitch. You could do a zigzag, you could do twin needle, um, lots of things that you can do um, to hem this. 
The advantage of the cover stitch is when I'm stitching from here, I can make sure that both of my um, needles are on my fabric. And I know that my hem is going to be even. So that's the beanie style hat. And we make, a, like I said, we make a lot of these for the rescue centers because we can um, do it really quick and easy. The only fleece that I use is Polar Tech. Um, I don't use um, the stuff from the chain stores because it's really not that warm. Um, your Lux fleece, all your Minky, all of those are very soft but they're really not a warm fabric. So I use the Polar Tech. I really like the wind block because that blocks, um, this one blocks up to 90% of that wind. And the wind is really what makes you cold. That wind just pulsing right through you is what makes you cold. And that's where you're gonna get your frostbite and things like that. So um, these, uh, these wind pro and wind block fabrics are perfect for that. And the advantage of the wind pro is you can use it, um, if it has some stretch to it, you can use it for cuffs. And now my wrists are gonna stay warm also. Next thing we're gonna do is mittens. And this mitten tends to be a challenge for a lot of different people. Here are your pattern pieces. You have the back, you have the lower palm and the upper palm. And I know people look at this and going, well, how is that going to make a mitten? But it really is actually very easy. Um, I've added notches and dots, and that is what's going to match up. I know fleece can be hard to um, mark. So on this set here, I've used some colored dots. Okay, so I have my, um, my upper palm and my lower palm. Now, Polar Tech does have a right and a wrong side to it. And a lot of your Polar Tech fabrics have what's called a durable water repellent finish. Now, kids and mittens, they're going to get wet. But um, if it's snowing, you know, the snow is just going to fall off your, um, your jackets, things like that. So you want to make sure that that right side of the fabric goes to the outside of your garment. Generally, they say thin to the skin. So if you look at the cut edge, this side is thinner and this side is thicker. So the thinner side will go towards your body. So I have marked the wrong size. Now, when you're working with mittens, I really stress that you work mirror image. So you don't end up with two left mittens or two right mittens. So we are gonna put these together like this. And it can either be this way or this way. Either, either way is fine. I am going to begin sewing. And I'm gonna start sewing here, back stitching, quarter inch seam allowance, and I'm gonna come around. And what I like to do back stitch is put this next mitten right there, back stitch all the way around. You can see my, my cutting isn't exactly perfect. And that happens. This fleece is so bulky, can be difficult to get an accurate cut. So don't worry about that. Um, quarter inch is still going to give you a nice round mitten. Now, once you have that top stitch, and we want to use a long stitch, um, 3.5 is what I've been using. Um, these people that say, oh, you have to use a wobble stitch and all of this. No, just a regular straight stitch is fine. The only time I would worry about stretching is if I'm doing ski pants or a turtleneck or something that's tight fitted. But for mittens, a regular straight stitch is fine. Now, once I have that done, I want to go back and I want to zigzag. I want to zigzag those seam allowances and I've done it in black so you can see. And zigzag, I don't back stitch because it's, it's just to compress the bulk. Now, if you have any excess fabric sticking out, feel free to trim that. In fact, when I do the little kids mittens, and I have some of those in some of my other books, the toddler mittens, 
I pink that seam and then go back and zigzag it. Otherwise, it's so bulky inside the mitten that they can't get their little fingers in there. So I've done that for both of them. And now I'm going to open this up. And I am going to put my back. We're going to sew from this side. Now, this thumb is going to need to go up and down and up. Okay. I'm going to start right here. And I put a dot there so that you can see um, where that stitching ended from my palm pieces. That's where I want my needle to be. You don't want to over stitch this area because your mitten will not open as well. So back stitching, back stitching here. Now I bring the next mitten up right away and I continue on. So my thumbs are up. Now my thumb is down and I'm going to bring my machine over. My needle is going to go down right where that seam ended, back stitch all the way around. And now the thumb goes back up because I want this seam allowance to go up. Okay. And then I'm going to continue on and finish here. Then when I'm done, I'm going to zigzag the, the entire piece. Now, if you're using self fabric for the mittens, what you want to do is wrap it around your wrist to make sure that you can get it up, get the, the cuff on. Some of the fabrics, this one doesn't stretch a lot. This one stretches a lot. So it all depends what you're going to do. For these mittens, I'm going to do ribbing. And here's a piece of ribbing. You're going to follow the directions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this once again to my spray adhesive, and I'm going to give a little spritz here and a little spritz here. And I'm going to bring those raw edges together. Now I have three fingers inside, and I'm going to bring that over like this and then bring this over and that spray adhesive is going to keep those raw edges together. I don't want to zigzag those raw edges because that's going to stretch it out of shape. So go like this and that's going to give you a perfect cuff ready to be inserted in this mission in this mitten. Now I align the seams although with the bulk they may not stay aligned and I simply pin it in two places and this is a great way to do your serger to surge this um, if not if you're really having trouble controlling this bulk try zigzagging those raw edges together first and then go back and straight stitch now i will show you this um, it didn't quite line up that happens you're dealing with a lot of bulk um, a walking foot is excellent for working with this type of fabric. I'm just simply going to true that up and then insert my, in, insert my cuff. And that's going to give you these really great bit mittens. Now, what I love about the three-piece mitten is using scrap. I have two suitcases, and they're big suitcases full of scrap. I don't give any of my Polar Tech scraps away. Once they get too small for hats and mittens, they go into a bin and the local ASG make stuffs pillows and dog beds with it. But I save all of my scraps and the mittens are, they're not always the prettiest, doesn't really matter, but that's what I donate. I donate to the schools and the shelters. So um, I need to get a group of gals together and help me whittle down my supply. Here's a really fun fabric, and I will have some kits of this. This is a 100% wind block fabric, and it's a pretty deep teal. Um, it has a gridded surface on the wrong side. This is totally waterproof. This is moisture wicking, which means your own body moisture is going to wick to the surface and simply evaporate away and it's going to block 100% of the wind. So that is, so I will have some of those total wind block kits on my website soon also. I also have that as yardage, so if you're interested, let me know.
Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is a pattern, and this is our North Bay accessories. So this is my special number two, and it includes the Icelandic hat and mittens and these North Bay accessories. Now, these are really great. Um, work in an office that's cold or you um, just you get a little chilled while you're watching TV. And this is a great gift for guys, too. You could do this out of wool a wool plaid and it is it's a short scarf it's only this long but it has a button or a snap right here you don't always need yardage and yardage look at how nice it fits my neck that's the elegant short scarf and i show you how to get a perfect serge corner every time those are in the directions also the other things in the pattern are some really great um, headbands, but this is one of my favorites. This is the, I call it the menopause turtleneck because this is my version of a turtleneck. I've taken all my turtlenecks and taken them into crew necks because I'm just at that point in my life. But when I need a little something under my coat, I have this and I show you how to do these really great and easy buttonholes. And then when I get a little warm, I simply roll this up and tuck it in my pocket. So that is the neck gaiter. I call that the menopause turtleneck. Now the other two items in there, and these are really what everybody seems to want, is the neck wraps. And these go like this. There is uh, this cowl neck, and then there's a side button one. And what happens once you cover the back of your neck and shoulders, that's what really keeps you warm. But when you look at these pattern pieces, most people look at it and go, oh, there, there's, there's no way. So I'm going to do this in miniature. This is the cowl neck, the shawl collar pattern pieces. Here's the back, and that is placed on the fold. And here is the front. And that is also placed on the fold. Now, what you will notice with my samples, and I've done it in interlock because it's going to be a lot easier to see in interlock than in fleece, is I've already finished these edges. And I've used the wavy blade as I've done on this one. That's a perfectly acceptable finish on fleece because it's a knit. It's not going to fray. These are, oh, probably eight or nine years old and it's not going to fray. It's a perfectly great finish for fleece. So here's our two pattern pieces and I've cut them out and this is what they look like. Here is our front and here is our back. And you will notice there's some dots and there's a center back. There's a center back. And we have these two little V's with a dot and it says clip to the dot. And if you've ever done a wing collar or a cut on collar, this is what they look like. And I know you're looking at those two pieces going, yeah, there's, there's no way. So right sides together and I'm gonna match those center back and I'm gonna match this dot to this dot here. I'm gonna match this dot to this dot here. And I'm gonna stitch from dot to dot. Now the fun part is, because I've clipped to the corner, I can bring this over and align those raw edges. And if you want, you can stitch this all in one, all across here to the dot. I mean, I'm not quite even. Across the back, over to here. And that is going to give you this neck wrap. And this is what it looks like finished. It's great from reversible fabrics. And then you're going to add three um, closures. Now, in this case, I've chosen a button. And what I do with my buttonholes on fleece is I don't do traditional buttonholes. I've tried stabilizing. They just never turn out nice. 
So we're going to do um, what I call a fleece buttonhole. And as you can see, this is a piece of ultra suede, although you could use knit suede also. I have marked a rectangle. And that's what's great about using the suede is I can mark on it um, with a chalk marker or a wash away marker. And I am going to stitch a rectangle three times. And the rectangle is a quarter inch high by the width of my button. I'm going to stitch around there three times. And then I'm going to slit that open, being careful not to go to the very edges. And then in this case, I've just done a decorative stitch around the edge. And that is a great buttonhole for fleece. It eliminates the bulk of multiple layers of stabilizer. And it really gives you a very functional um, and durable buttonhole. Now for this one here, I've added snaps. And these are the snaps from the snap source. And what I do with fleece is I put a little piece of cutaway underneath and then trim it when I'm done so that the snap doesn't pull through my fabric. And that's a very stable snap in there. So that is the shawl collar North Bay. Now the next one is the side button collar. And once again, keeps the back of my neck covered so I'm nice and warm and just very stylish. And I'm gonna show you how to do this edge in just a minute. And you thought the other ones look strange. This is what it looks like. And I do wanna mention these come in two different sizes, a small, medium, and a large, um, extra large. So there are two sizes for each of these, depending on the size of your neck. Once again, we have center back marks here and here. And then we have just one of these clipped to the dot right here. But there are other series of dots that need to line up. And here it is in miniature. What you will notice is I've already finished the edge with the um, decorative blade. Now I'm gonna begin by putting center backs together. And then there's a dot here that lines up to that dot. This dot lines up to this dot. And this swings over like this. Sorry, it's clinging to itself. Swings over like this. And you would match the raw edges. And then you can stitch this pivoting at the dot going all the way across the back. And then add your closure, add your button or your snap. This one, I did a decorative buttonhole. You can see that, but that same buttonhole. Now, this is a trim on here, and this is really fun. What I've done is I've invented these rotary blades. This one is the Edge Perfect Blade. And what that does is put evenly spaced holes in your fabric so that you can crochet, blanket stitch, whip stitch, and all of your stitches are evenly spaced. Here's another edge right along here. With fleece, you actually need to cut a hole. You can't poke a hole with an awl because it closes up right away. We had a woman tell us she was pounding nails in her fabric every, um, every half inch to get that hole. Um, it is one of Nancy's Notion's top 25 ever. And I got to meet Nancy several years ago when we were commiserating. Nancy's grandparents' farm was next to my grandparents' farm. So it was just kind of like old home week in Winnick County, Wisconsin. Now we have another blade with wider spacing. Now this is an exclusive. Nobody else has this spacing. And you can find that on our website. There are other blades like this on the market. I will tell you the cut is not as deep. So if you're doing multiple layers of fleece, um, you don't get to that second layer. And we've had a lot of complaints about those blades not cutting evenly. So just thought I would, I would mention that. So long as I'm here, this is our snuggler shawl. You can find that on our, on our website. 
and it's the shawl with sleeves. Most sizes just take a one yard of fabric. It's got this little sleeve. Let's say you're sitting there eating popcorn in the evening. Um, it, unlike a Snuggie, um, it's, you know, it stays really nice. I just have a magnetic snap here and I am all ready to snuggle up and watch some Hallmark movies. Mm -hmm. These are my Maui pants. And then I'm looking at my I named it Maui pants because it's really fun for summer, but this has gnomes on it. So don't be fooled by the um, by the name. You can still use it, but this is out of flannel. And what's great about this pattern is that it sits at the high hip. It's not really, it doesn't sit at your waist. It sits at the high hip. I was looking for a pattern like that to teach class and couldn't find one. So I made one and we talked about, um, uh, the cold. This is the new Sierra coat. And what I like about it is this crossover keeps me really nice and warm. Now, this is actually a revamp of a um, coat from years ago. Here is the original. And it has this collar. Um, I've used some, uh, um, you know, some clasps instead of buttons. And so I took this collar and decided, well, we need a hood because a lot of us like our hoods. So I've added a hood to this pattern and I've simplified the pockets. I know you can't see the pockets, but there's the hood and that's the new Sierra coat. So you will find some of those, those bonus items on our website. Someone asked about what size the snaps that you use. That um, use yeah. These are the size 24 snaps. Okay. Um, they're just a little easier to grab than the, the size 16. And while I have time, this has been my favorite item for doing download patterns because it clips right to my table and the tape is right where I need it. And where do you get that? I, Michael's Hobby wow. Lobby. Um, I like yes. It. Yeah, I do too. I've, I've been looking for the ones that clip on your hand and I, they don't make those anymore because that would be ideal. Patty, thank you so much. This is Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. We love Patty. We're so glad that she joined us. Everyone, please have, if, have a safe rest of your um, year. And if you haven't signed up for our webinar subscription, they are on sale to the middle of January. And I think Terry's got a special, she has a, a link on the website, but um, if you need um, to know how much it is, let me know. I will send out an email with the links for the for the subscriptions if you're interested. The only way that you can watch the 24 hour webinar is if a you're a subscriber or b you pay for the subscription set or pay for the webinar by itself. And honestly, the subscription is not that much more. You should subscribe for the whole year because right. you get to download all these all these classes. So yeah, if you have access to of these other classes, I've done one on knits. Did I do one on elastic waistbands? I've got several classes. Yeah, I've, you've done a bunch. Done yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also like us on our Facebook pages. Um, there's three of us here. There's Pam Demore. There's me at Great Copy. There's Michelle at Machine Sewing, sewing, sewing Machine Artistry. Artistry. And yeah. sign up for our newsletters. I know none of us, we don't send out a lot of things. Unlike you know my brother-in-law who posts like eight or 10 times a day. Um, and we don't try to say a Viagra or anything like that either. No, no, exactly, exactly. So just we just give you the, the pertinent and fun stuff. So, so yeah, connect with us that way because we do love to hear from you. Um, if you have questions over the next couple of days, um, feel free to, to contact me. Um, I will get this, this website thing straightened out and going. So um yeah. happy holidays to everyone and pam thank you again for inviting me michelle oh, always a pleasure always a pleasure i wish we lived closer <laughs> bye, bye. bye.